Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you when I'm uploading a new video. And if you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below just by tapping on the title of the video and it'll drop right down. What am I bringing to you today? Today I'm going to be showing you what I do with these vertical mirrors that you can get at Walmart. They're about $5. Actually, I think they're $5.88 to be exact. They're a mirror that you can hang over your door. That's not what I'm doing with it. I'm going to turn this into a decor piece that you are absolutely going to love for under $10. And I do want to say that this is definitely one of those decor pieces that can be made to suit any decor style. I'm doing it in the decor style that's going to suit my decor here in my home, but you can very easily make this to suit your decor. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for these vertical mirrors that you can get from Walmart. Alrighty, let's get this DIY started with a little crackle medium. I picked up this folk art crackle medium from Michaels for about $7.99 with a 40% off coupon. You can get it for about $4.50. This has lasted me a while. I've used it in several DIYs. A little goes a long way. This step is definitely optional. If you don't like that weathered crackled look, you can skip this step and just paint the outside of this frame to suit your decor. I like the look of the weathered crackled paint, so I'm gonna start off by giving the outside of this mirror, the frame, a good coat of this crackle medium. Now you're gonna wanna let this get good and dry so the medium cures. Once the medium's good and dry, I'm gonna take Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ivory, and I'm gonna put a nice light coat over the medium. As you're doing this, you're gonna see the crackle effect taking place pretty quickly, and your paint is gonna dry quicker than normal. You're not gonna wanna do too many coats over it because it will affect the outcome and the look of the crackle. If you want a more harsh crackle look, you're gonna just do a real light coat. If you want a lighter crackle look, you're gonna do a bit of a thicker coat and you're gonna go over it a couple times more. And as always, I'm gonna set this outside for just a couple of minutes just to let this top coat dry. A couple months ago, this wood contact paper made my favorite find. I found this at Walmart for $5.88. I picked up a couple rolls because I just loved it and knew that I could incorporate this into some of the farmhouse DIYs because of the look of the wood, how distressed it is. I just love it. And so with that in mind, I knew that I was gonna wanna use this contact paper in today's DIY. I started off by cutting a 12 inch piece in length of this contact paper. And what's great about contact paper is on the back side, it's got a grid, it's got lines. So you can easily just count the lines and measure out how many inches you need so you're not wasting a lot of the paper. Once I did that, I took my sheet and I divided it up into three sections at six and a half inches long. And you should be able to get six perfect pieces at six and a half inches long, the width of this contact paper. Then going with the grain of the wood on the paper, I'm gonna cut 80 5 8 strips. 5 8 is two lines shy of three quarter inches on your ruler. To cut 80 six and a half by 5 8 strips, it took me a total of 24 inches in length of this contact paper. For this next part of the DIY, I'll be using a dry erase pen and a ruler. There's a bit more measuring to do. I know it seems like there's a lot of measuring and cutting, but I tell you the end result is so worth it because this is such a budget-friendly DIY and the outcome is amazing. I'm gonna start off by taking my ruler and from the edge of the outside of the mirror, which is the frame, I'm gonna measure in three inches and place a mark. At that three inch mark, every mark after, I'm gonna measure out at two and three quarter inches for the full length of this mirror. So the first mark is at three inches and every mark after, you're gonna mark at the two and three quarter inch mark. Then from each mark that I did, 
I'm gonna measure down two and a half inches and place another mark. This really is the extent of the measuring. It isn't hard, this is easy to do. It took me just a couple of minutes to measure this out. And trust me, measuring it out is going to make the outcome of this DIY perfect and really easy to do. So again, like I said, from every mark that I just measured, I'm gonna measure down two and a half inches. After I've placed all my measurement marks on the top part of the mirror, I'm gonna repeat the process on the bottom part of this mirror, doing the exact measurements. Now the fun part begins. I'm gonna start placing my strips down. And again, these strips were six and a half inches long by five eighths of an inch wide. And I'm gonna start off by placing a strip going from each of the inner dots from top to bottom. Now that was why we measured it because it really does kind of make it foolproof. All of the center strips are going to be lined up. You don't have to worry about if they're even, if one is higher than the other. By placing the dots that I placed, it makes it so easy to set down these strips and it's almost foolproof. Your strips are gonna come out perfectly straight and evenly apart. So this is what you should be left with, are these strips that are going down the center of the mirror for the full length of the mirror. Now I'm gonna take and just place these strips at the bottom of these center strips here. And I found that if I take these strips and on the corner here, this top corner, if I place it in the center of these strips here, it's gonna line up perfectly. Everything's gonna be even. The idea is to place your strips in a way that they end up at an angle like this so there is a point here in the middle that is right in the center of the two longer strips here. I'm gonna continue to place the strips just like I just did down the full length of the bottom and the top of this mirror. And I'm telling you, once you place your first two strips, it all just kinda comes into place and it's really easy to set these strips down we're using contact paper, so it's repositionable. You can easily just peel it up and reposition it if you need to. It's easy to do, and I tell you, this project moves along pretty quickly once you've gotten the rhythm of placing your strips down. Now on each end of the mirror, we have this three inch space that we started off with where there isn't a strip. So I'm gonna take a strip and I'm gonna place it right along the edge of the mirror, but I'm not gonna do it where the full 5 8 strip is on the mirror. I'm gonna do it so I can crease the contact paper and cut off the excess because it's gonna be too thick and it's not gonna be proportioned with the other strips. And so you can see that I'm just kinda of creasing it along the edge of the mirror so I can take my razor and cut it off and this is just gonna give it a more finished look and make it look like the pattern is continuing on. Now I'm also gonna take my razor and right along the bottom edge of the frame of this mirror, I'm gonna cut off the excess contact paper that's hanging over the edge. I decided to make all the strips one size six and a half inches just to cut back on confusion. I feel like it just gets confusing when there's too many sizes about and you just don't know which ones you're grabbing or you grab the wrong size. And so I figured it was just easier to cut one length of strips, place them and cut off the excess. Yeah, there is a bit of waste, but in this project I really didn't mind because we only really used 24 inches in length of the contact paper anyway, and this is just gonna make it a lot easier. I was realizing pretty quickly on when I was placing down the contact paper strips that I didn't much care for the color of the outside of the frame. It wasn't blending and going together with the color of the contact paper the way I had hoped. And so I knew straight away that I was gonna have to fix this, that I was gonna have to darken it up a bit. 
This really is gonna be an easy fix using Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber Brown and this black. I figured that if I mix the two together, it was gonna darken up this brown to the brown that I needed it to be to bring out that darker brown that's in the contact paper. And I realized that that was the brown that I needed the outside of this frame to be. To seal the paint, I'm gonna use this matte Mod Posh. Because I wanna have the capability of cleaning and dusting this mirror and not worrying about the paint chipping off, I figured that by putting a couple good coats of the Mod Podge on it, it's gonna seal the paint onto the frame of this mirror nicely, and then I can easily dust and clean this mirror and I'm not gonna damage it. I do wanna let you know that it is okay to spray a vinegar Windex on the mirror where the contact paper is. It's not going to ruin the print of the contact paper, but if you do happen to use a cleaner that has a bleach in it, it will take the print of the contact paper off. So when cleaning the mirror, you just kind of want to stick to either soap or water or a vinegar based cleaner. Now to hang this mirror up, because I'm hanging it up in the horizontal position instead of the vertical position, I'll be using these Velcro strips by command. These hold up to 16 pounds of weight each. This mirror is nowhere near 16 pounds. I'd say it's maybe five or six pounds at the most. And so just to be safe, I'm gonna place three strips on the back of this and just put it up on the wall. It's damage free, it's easy to move, and it's gonna work perfectly. So this was a while ago, something that was posted on Facebook by a subscriber who challenged me to do this. This mirror was regularly $249 and this subscriber, and I wish I knew her name, asked me if I could recreate this and challenged me to do this. It took me a while to get to it because I just wasn't sure how I wanted to execute this, but once I figured it out and once I knew that I could use contact paper to do this, I knew that I could do this for under $10 and achieve a look that is very similar and I love it. I love the rustic feel of this mirror and like I said in the beginning, this is definitely one of those DIYs that you can do to suit your decor, any decor, very easily just by changing the color of the frame of the mirror and the contact paper. You could very easily use the marble contact paper from the Dollar Tree that you get for a dollar and you could do this in the glam decor style, you can do this in a modern chic decor style, in a sleek decor style. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get this video to 6,000 likes because each and every one of those thumbs up, they really do help my channel to grow. It helps YouTube to notice me by putting me on the recommended list by getting those thumbs up. So until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody.